And look, we're live. Amazing. The power of technology. I am so excited. We have such a wonderful Goal Chat Live today. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, I'm Deborah Eckerling. I'm the author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and founder of The Dev Method, which is my system for helping people figure out what they want and how to get it. Because you can't get what you want unless you know what you want, right? Right. right. So, right. I, so every Sunday night, I host Goal Chat on Twitter, where we share our wins and goals and dive into a special topic. And then on Monday, I bring in a special guest to dive deeper into the topic. So this week's topic is showcasing your expertise, which it, it really doesn't matter if you have a business, if you are in business, if you're a consultant, if you're a writer, you need to let people know what you do so they can find you. And what better guest today than Bruce Jones? So Bruce is an author, product designer, educator, and all around like, I like to help people figure things out guy. And Bruce, what did I miss from your bio? And thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Deb. This is great. This is fun. This is our bi-coastal thing. We're on different coasts, so we're that's kind of cool. The little electrons going over. Um, the, the power <laughs> of and I was I was talking to someone in another country this morning, and I said, like the benefit of now is there are more opportunities to hang out with people from around the country and around the world. So right. Right. really thrilled to have you here. And I interrupted you, so go right ahead. Oh, all right. And Angela is watching already. Angela, welcome. And if you are watching us live, please say hi so we can say hi back to you. So Bruce. Cool. So I am a, um, a graphic designer. <clears throat> that was my career. And um, I'm an author. I have over 40, 50 books. They're right there. All those books right there. Uh, this is my newest book, How to Sell Your Book. And it teaches, it shows you all the things I have learned over the last 10 years of creating all of those 50 books and helping a whole lot of other people. Um, I have a really nice, cool Facebook group called How to Publish Your Book. Um, we have 5,000 authors, self-publishers, and anything to do with publishing in that group. And so I do that stuff. Um, I'm a product creator. I love creating products. And um, I use my graphic design skills to create lots of products that I still have um, over the over the over the years. So you can learn more about me as as Deborah is right there um, at Bruce Jones Design. <laughs> there it is. Oop, and there's my book right there. So you can you can check all that stuff out. And that's the Facebook group which is really cool. And I uh, love people to come on over and uh, uh, ask questions. That's a great thing to do. So I'm graphic designer, author, product developer, and um, teach and consult with people to help them get their books published, but also their products and uh, encourage people to use these amazing tools and, and uh, experiment. That's what, what I love about the web. You can experiment and try all kinds of stuff. So <clears throat> if you have an idea, you can do it. So. Well, and, and you know that's my philosophy because just about anything is possible because you have all of these things at your disposal, so why not use them? Right, right. Right? Oh, yeah, and I and I talk about that. I think there's sort of five barriers that have fallen, and there's now a sixth one. So uh, for anybody who's, who's like us, who wants to create things, so uh, pu publishing has fallen, advertising, marketing, distribution, and um, so when I did broadcasting, so like we're broadcasting globally, potentially globally right now for basically uh -huh. free publishing is, um, you know, using self publishing and Amazon and print on demand marketing and advertising are the social media platforms that we have access to um, and distribution which is really what the print on demand is. We can send our products anywhere and we don't have to have inventory or deal with set all that, you know, e-commerce stuff. And then because of what's gone on in this past year, um, we are all become Zoomified. And uh, so <laughs> I think, which is a enormously cool thing for anybody like us who's broadcasting is now people who were never comfortable with it, they don't want to be on it, now will be on it, or at least they'll access you and watch you. And they're willing to do that. And people who, who sort of just push that off, you know, to be in the world, um, you need to be part of use these tools. And now there are so many people doing it that we can um, promote and sell our products as if using video. Video has caught up in bandwidth. People's acceptance has dropped down. So the resistance is gone. It just gives us enormous opportunities 
um, with all these different tools to to really get your message out, get your products out, and do all that kind of stuff. So, and, and you're kind of talking the topic backwards, which is fine. I like that <laughs> because it, all these different tools you're talking about really serve to share your expertise, your business. What is the thing that you know that you want people to know? You know, and you know, and a, a big question and this shows up in gold chat at least once a month it's everybody has the the imposter syndrome the fear of you know putting themselves out there i say if you know things claim it and share it what right. do you think right. i think so 100 percent. i'd say be, be proud and be loud is sort of the thing is yeah it definitely and if you know it you will know it i mean if you know it you will become comfortable it takes it's really the first couple of broadcasts, if you're going to do it this way, are, are awkward and hard to do. Um, but if you, but once you get past sort of number two, three, or four, you will, you know, you're going to be able to be able to talk about your stuff and find your audience. In the beginning, nobody's watching anyway, so you have lots of room. <laughs> to, you have lots of opportunity to make a mistake. And one of the things I've always loved about the web is it's fluid and changeable. So that if it's, you know, we used to live in a world where things were really fixed. You know, I don't know if I pick up this flashlight, <clears throat> this is fixed. I can't change this. I can't change the color. I can't change the size. You could but paint it. I could paint it and it would peel <laughs> off and it would look bad. And, you know, and it, you know, I, it goes on and off. But <clears throat> so, so much of the world was like this, it, where things were fixed. And now, you know, because of the web, you can and print on demand and social media, all that. You can put put stuff out. You can you can get it back. You can change it, and that means you can develop. You can learn. You know, you put something out. You go, oh, that wasn't quite right. Let me go, pull it back. Let me fix it. Let me change it. And uh, I think one of the hardest buttons for a lot of people is the publish button, and to push that button, whether it's on a blog, on a book. On a post, anything. Sometimes it's just so hard for people to push that button. But the the transformation and the knowledge of what it should be comes on the other side of the pushing that button. And then you go, oh, that's what I should have written. Well, we can go back and change that and fix it. So, <clears throat> it yes, it's scary publishing, but it's also easy to fix and change and make it make it correct. So, it, it's in my first. Well, for those who don't know me, so okay, this is my third book. And first traditionally published book. I did self-publish too. I did Purple Pencil Adventures, writing prompts for kids of all ages, and writing write on blogging 51 tips to create, write, and promote your blog. And for me, those were great learning experiences. And a lot of what you teach is self-publishing. And we can go back and forth because there are benefits right. to both. And uh, for it's a different conversation. But it's really even going the traditional route, hitting send on that email to send it <laughs> to either send out your, your book proposal or send in your final draft. I remember um, vividly the day that I sent my final draft of this into Mango. And it's nerve wracking. But at right. some point, you have to say, OK, this is good. Right. And and rule number one I talk about a lot is in and I'm sure I'm I'm gonna say you subscribe to this as well. You have to be your biggest fan because if you're not, where's everybody else gonna come from? Right. That's right. Right. And also I would add on to what you're saying is the perfection freezes progress, which is a phrase I have used um, for a long time. Oh, there's Keith. Um, the perfection <laughs> freezes progress is that it just holds us back from sort of moving forward. And it's the it's the moving forward and pushing that send button or that publish button that makes um, makes everything work. It makes that you you grow, you learn, you can move to the next step. Uh, you know, we're always going to have all these obstacles on it and they're going to get in the way. And you sometimes you just have to um, you just have to step through it and just go with it. And, you know, nobody likes to be sort of go, oh, you're the guy that did this or you're the girl that did that. But, you know, at some point you just own what you have and you go, eh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was bad. OK, I'll go on to the next one. And, you know, we live in a world of, um, you know, the Facebook and Twitter and things where stuff just rolls on down, you know, so there's more coming. And so I think just, you know, you, you need to just keep pushing if you're going to do it. So. 
I, I am completely in agreement. One of my favorite phrases is done is better than perfect. I like your, your phraseology of it. Perfection freezes progress. It has to be good enough and professional right. enough for people to take you seriously. But at some point you have to be brave, you know, <laughs> put on your superhero cape or whatever it is that gives you that extra, you know, push and just say, okay, I, I'm happy with it. And, and I want to jump back to the whole uh, imposter syndrome problem, because usually my response is if someone says, I'm afraid to put myself out there, I say, but there are people you could be helping and you can't help them unless they know you exist. Right. Um, and I would add to that, especially if you're, a, if you're a business person or you have products, is that your competitors probably aren't doing it, that you're willing to step out, take that chance, spread your message. You know, there are other people behind you who who don't have those guts and you get to be in front. You get to get people to see your product. Um, and you can always go look at your competitors because it's easy to find them. You know, just go into Amazon or go into Google, wherever it is, and see if they're creating videos and they're doing stuff. You know, we we're, we seem like we're surrounded by, especially um, like people like me who do a lot of books and around a lot of books and have people with books. It thinks like everybody has a book because everybody I know has a book. In reality, it's very small number of people have have a book, and uh, so you can step out in front and it gives you you know great advantage to go do things but your competitors probably aren't doing it and so that means you know you step out you become the leader of your your message your tribe by doing that so I love that I, I and you saw you get to have the guts it's like it's like you get to it's like this <laughs> privilege right right right, right. Uh, so I we we said hello to Keith we also have another guest joining us live Yael Cohen so hi thank yeah, you yeah. for hello. joining yep. us <laughs> and, and I, I'm gonna throw Angela on there who says you're an cool. awesome teacher and the people who are in my Facebook group which is right on online whenever someone has a promo question I just tell them to join your group but if people in your group are listening and they want to have some fun with sharing their goals and wins and community, please jump on over to mine, which is right on online. I was going to give you a plug. So you, you were, do, yeah. So you do something in your group um, where you post, this is a great strategy that I now have started to do, which is you post questions. And so one of the hardest things in the online world in the Facebook world is getting people to engage, get them to do something like, you know, post something, do something, like something. It's just, you know, it's the same small group that does it. You know, I have almost 5,000 people in my how to publish group, but there's probably a hundred in there that are active. And out of that hundred, it's a rolling 20 that really, maybe even 10 that are active all the time. And it kind of rolls around in that group. So you, on your group, um, what I want you to do is you post questions constantly, sort of like, what was your win today? What is your goal tomorrow? What do you did? What did you do that was successful? And you get a lot of engagement from people doing that. And so I picked that up and have now added it into my group, but not at the frequency that you're doing because your frequency is a lot higher. But um, but it actually it works really really well. And um, so I, I've done it now for the last two weeks where I. You know, one of them was to post. In fact, I made a little list of the sheet, you know, which I hand out. But, um, you know, one was take a selfie picture with your book. You know, do this. And, you know, I did it. And oh, then you I, mean this? This. That's right. This. This is be loud and be proud. And um, um, I asked the people in my group to take a selfie picture with the book cover. And the first day, nothing happened. I did mine so I can show, you know, I can do it too. I'll, you know, I have to walk my own walk. And, uh, and then... They've just been dropping in. All the different people have been holding up their books and um, you know highlighting with the Amazon link, which is super important. So, um, so I just want to say that's a, 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 a thank you to you for that idea. But it's a fairly easy. I just didn't think about it to do, and it, but it just helps with engagement of your group, but also your all your people connecting with the other people that's in your group to see the things you're doing. So, well, in, in thank you. First of all, thank you. Second of all, what's really funny, because I do I do a different thing every day of the week. Sometimes I rephrase it, but it's pretty much networking goals Monday, goals Tuesday, blog share day, 
Wednesday, to your horn Thursday, Facebook Friday weekend plans. So it's the um, it's setting the standard, it's setting the consistency. And I once had someone message me, is everything okay? You forgot to post blog share day. And I'm like, <laughs> score me. Oh, oh. When, when people are expecting, and that's why inconsistency, again, another tangent, it's really important because right. when you're right. developing this community around your expertise, you want people waiting in anticipation. Ooh, <laughs> when can I share my cool thing now? Deb that's hasn't right. put the link right. up. Because that's the the only thing I switch around is I, I play with the different times of day that I share things because uh, I can. Right. I, and and we have a so we have a question from Angela, or right. it's more like a suggestion. She wants me to ask you how you use everything to market your books. And I want to get there in a second before we jump in there. We're talking about what is your expertise, and I am all about community and in connecting dots. So if you are watching either live or on the replay, please put in the chat, what is your expertise? Because a big reason I have these conversation starters in my group is you never know when you're gonna make a match between two people who have a similar interest or someone is has a resource someone else needs. So please share in the chat, what is your expertise? Everybody knows mine, goal queen. <laughs> and <laughs> I've got you doing that now, don't I? So, yeah, I come th on. This, this is my new habit. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Bruce Jones. Before we came, before we came on, I said you're going to see me hold my book up a lot. But what this does is one, you know, promote your your book, be proud of it, but also get your face connected to your book. That this is this is the, the you. You know, this is your thing, and it kind of goes together. And no one else is doing it. No one on any other show is holding up your book. So it's it's to you to promote it, and you don't have to be like you know over the top. On it all the time but you know I mean the, the goal is you're trying to let people know that you have something and you know I mean if I'm selling flashlights I'm gonna hold the flashlight up so you know so um. well, <laughs> it, it, well the other thing that I do that I am now known for on zoom calls is giving gold stars so Ooh, yeah if I'm okay. in a networking event and someone shares some really good news if now it's like Yay, because I mean, everybody else has the Ooh. thumbs up and I just share the stars yeah. because if we were in real life, you would get one. Right. You'd I'm walk like, over and hand it to him. And that person yes. would probably remember you for a long, long time. If you did that, if you're at an event, at some kind of a networking event or a conference or something, uh, they would remember you for a long, long, long time if you did that. So, Well, yes. in real life, I would go to conferences with those gold star stickers. Yeah. Yeah. So fortunately, <laughs> I I have a post-it notepad. <laughs> <laughs> a custom post-it notepad. Cool. Yes. So we all know my expertise, goal queen. What is your what? Well, we kind of know yours, but why don't you spell it out for us? And also the journey, how you went from book design guy to yeah. book promotion guy. So for lack I of a better word. If I had to say um, uh, an expertise, you know, if somebody said an expertise, um, implementation is definitely an expertise. It doesn't take me, you know, um, like this this afternoon getting ready for this. You know, I went onto my blog. I, I put, you know, this product that we may talk about or may not talk about. You know, it's we'll on talk my, about it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, I, put, we'll I, put a, I put a post up about it. I put a page up about it. So I, I just, because I have... You know, I was a freelance graphic designer for, for 30 years. Um, <laughs> the um, One of the ways you're successful as a freelance designer is you have to be fast. You get to be, in order to make money and make a living at it, um, one of the keys is you need to really be able to move and really get stuff done. So that just translates into, into setting goals and knowing what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, that kind of thing. So that, I think that skill just translated into my own books and my own products. Still, things take a month or a year to do, but you know, I can you can kind of do stuff. Um, the journey to getting to do this, um, well, I, I set my goals, <laughs> uh, it seems kind of crazy, but I set my goals at around five years old, and um, so you know, like we, we think back, what do you people will often say, well, What is the earliest memory you have, and uh, you know, whatever that was. Well, mine was a goal to publish books 
do something in TV and film and only own business and make products. So it was really those sort of those four things. And I've done all of those those things through my life. But the hardest one was the books because I'm dyslexic. And so I'd flip things around. And writing was just an enormous struggle. All the I was the kid um, who made models in schools or did a you know a little play instead of the paper. Um, you know, in, in college, I had a professor who would flunk you if you put a comma splice in your paper. Well, I have no idea what a comma splice is. I have none. I have, I have no idea. So I just eliminated all commas from my paper. And so there's no commas in anything I wrote. <laughs> and it affected things for years and years and years. Um, I said, well, it wasn't wrong not to have them. It was just wrong to have them. So I was like, well, hell with it. I'm just not going to put them in. And um, so I just kept pushing and pushing. And I really wanted to be able to write and do things. And so in my 50s, I um, I started blogging. I started trying to do a blog. I just I said, I'm just going to try to push my way through this and try to figure it out. And I had a lot of people help at different times. And uh, I took a course from an internet marketing guy, Jeff Walker, who people here may know. And he had us doing like a business plan. And he released the instructions in little tiny bits every day over a period of a couple of weeks. And you had just fill in one little paragraph. So I did that. And by the time I got done with that process, for some reason, suddenly like a switch had gone off in my head and I could write. And um, and I was like, like literally words were like coming out of my thing. It was like so sort of the weirdest. I've had it happen with learning music and I had it happen with words. The words one was, you know, amazing. And so I just wrote and wrote and wrote. I just would write. I, I once, um, I would take days off and just go. Um, to to you know, like the Brandeis Library or study library study rooms. You know, every library has a study room. Just sit there and write. Just write. Um, I took vacation to go write. Anyways, so that I did that. Now I started to creating books and print on demand. And Kin and Amazon came online with the books all kind of co coincided around the same time. And um, so I I we published. I had an earlier book um, that I published. I'll grab it. It's right behind me. Right here. It's my, this is the first, the very, very first book I ever did, Dinosaurs Dance. It's 1979, and I drew all the illustrations, and we published it in Boston. Nice. I need to republish it and stick it up on Amazon. But um, around this time when I sort of had this uh, breakthrough in writing, I was also learning to play guitar, mandolin, ukulele, and banjo, and I put together this book. This is really the first sort of print-on-demand book that I did, and there's a couple of versions of it, but... Um, and this just sort of documented my journey of learning these instruments, which is a great way to write a book, is to document what you're doing and then just kind of put it together. And then this translated into lots of other books. And so I have music books and I have a line of, of maps I use for business presentations and things that I designed. And those got turned into, um, you know, they got turned into coloring books. I have a line of these. So coloring books, geography, um, uh, all the kinds of, you know, you know, books like this and books like this. <laughs> so it just, you know, and then I did things like this. Like, you know, if you want more books, this is part of a series of four. Well, just shrink them and make them like this. You know, now you have eight books. <laughs> the same book. Just change the size. Um, and I, I also learned a lot about, and something I teach a lot is repurposing your content. Um I'd say that the most, some of the, my most successful books were not the original book. It's the book that came out of another book. So uh, when I wrote this book, at the back of the book to fill it up, I had put some sheet music pages. Then one day I went, oh, wait a minute. Why don't I just take a hundred of those pages and I'll make a bigger book. And this was the one that, this book was the one that became the success. This one's okay, but this one was probably five times the sales of this one. That's ridiculous. So it's- I mean, good, but ridiculous, but, right? And, yeah, and you just, so a couple messages out of that are, um, write whatever you feel like writing. Don't, don't, I know that people say, you know, to niche yourself down and be the expert in that field and that's what you write about. I would say, forget that. Write whatever you feel like writing because you have no idea what's gonna work. and. If you have an interest and um, you just explore it and go for it, because you'd be surprised, that might be the one that people resonate with. Uh, it's almost impossible to figure out. Um, what's the other thing I was going to say? The um, wait, that's one. Is there that's more? One. 
yeah. Uh, I just had it in my head and I, I forgot it. But um, yeah, don't let people hold you back and and just put out there is that yeah you just don't know and then repurpose look at the your material you now have a new understanding of it from that book and you can spin out into other other books and other products um but yeah it's just don't niche yourself in down because um it's you know oh well, i know i was gonna say yes the second thing is about that is people are very narrowly focused and just because you wrote a book on music doesn't mean if they discover you have a book on geography, they're going to go, I can't write, I can't read that book because he wrote a book on music. People don't think that way. They just look for the products that, that interest them, that they want. Um, you know, and so it just gives you opportunity to explore and we have these amazing tools to put it out there. So, um, you know, repurpose, repurpose is I, I just huge. I've, I've done so many things with repurposing, um, you know, the products. So Okay. So we've got write whatever you feel like writing. Yep. Repurpose. Is there yep. a third thing? Is there a third or just thing? the two? I like um, threes. Don't you like threes? Threes are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three's good. Um, <laughs> re release. <laughs> yes, three's good. Um, <laughs> in, in, quick, like, quick, or, quick. Think of um, something. Oh, oh um, uh, release in multiple formats would be a really key thing. So what that means is that we have the opportunity to release books in print, release them as eBooks, release them as PDF books, and audio books, maybe even a video book, in that um, you know Amazon gives us the ability to do print and eBooks. When because now with Amazon they want all images to be 300 dots per inch, whether you're an eBook or a print book. What that means is by the time you get done with one book, you are just about done with the other book. So release it because again, people don't you don't know what people are going to buy, and you may have said I'm just going to do the print book. And actually, all your audience wanted was the ebook. Most of my sales come from the print book because I do books, you know, that you have to kind of fill in. <laughs> but <laughs> sort of it kind of makes it happen. But um, but like this book, my new book, most of these the sales for this book is coming in the ebook version. So it's it you just you just don't know. And now I'm exploring um, audio books, which is also slash podcast. Like you can podcast your book. You know, you've made book once. You can just read this book chapter by chapter. And you have, I don't know how many chapters I have in here. I have, you know, 12 chapters. But you have a 12, that's a, a 12 series podcast that you can do. So you can, re, again, repurposing, using different formats in different ways. Um, it, that's I think, super important. But just write whatever you want. <laughs> just what I... That's, you just don't know. That's that's the thing is you just you have no idea and don't let people hold you back. And if you have an interest um, and there's so many different formats and ways. So maybe you don't have enough for a big book to release it as a PDF. You know, one page. This is a book. One page is a book if it's a PDF and you're selling it as a PDF. So, you know. Start with one page. If you don't know what to do, but you can come up with 10 tips about something, re pick, take a Word file, write your 10 tips down, put your name at the top, your thing at the bottom, put your thing, make a little graphic of it, and put it up on your website or on Facebook or wherever and sell that one tip. This might be the tip that saves somebody's life, this, this page. Probably not you this don't page. know. You, you don't, don't know. know. You don't know. And if people buy the one page, oh. Well, maybe I'll make it two pages. Maybe I'll make it three pages. But I didn't spend a year of my life trying to figure out whether this was a book that was worth it. I got it out to the. I brought it out to the world. I released it to the world. Release it in pieces. And if you have a website, you have a blog, you have a platform for selling your things, and you can test. To, does anybody care? And you can try it. Write one page and see if anybody cares. You know. Each one of these little tips on this, this is the table of contents of a, of a book I have. That's a podcast. That's a video. That's a blog post. You can test your material paragraph by paragraph before you ever move forward and made a book out of it. Wow. That it, it's in anybody who, who's read your goal guide or read articles by me knows that I am a huge fan of journaling and brainstorming. So if you don't know what you want to write, just, do directed journaling, which is my 
take, uh, make a bunch of 15 minute appointments with yourself on a certain topic and just dump everything out of your head and do this a few times, compare your notes and see what you have. It works well for everything, but it would be really <laughs> applicable for what we're talking about here is right. if you want to write right. something to promote your expertise and you don't know what that is directed and I'll put that link, I've wrote an article on it, I'll put that link in the recap as well. It's just getting that stuff that's in your head out right. of your head and onto the world. And and that's really, I guess I'm putting a real fine point on it. That's what this is all about. Getting the stuff you know out there. You could right. do it in books and blogs and social media posts. And one idea can find 10 places that exist, right? Which right. goes to which goes to the next question. What, what, we're gonna back up because both Angela shared her expertise. I, Bruce, I do that too. I totally do that too. <laughs> just, you know, so just I, have to have fun. you know, yeah, we only like get this. this long. We only get this long, whatever this long, and then it's done. So, like, you know, what you didn't do this. So, <laughs> exactly. So, I want to shout out Angela, who's an artist, author, and business coach, and then I want to shout out to Yael, whose expertise is special. <laughs> she gave an advocate in goats, and I love. I mean. I'm sure you've got a great story, but throwing goats in there makes you super memorable. I'm going to remember the goats. I mean, yeah. and the work you do as an advocate is super important, but adding that to it, it's just, that's what's going to get people. I would read that book. So y Yale is a friend of mine. And when you talk to Yale, you only hear, really hear about one thing, goats. <laughs> she has to go help the goats. They're in, like, there's a communal goat group and they go and there's all kinds of things about goats. And she wrote, made goat journals and, you know, it's, it's, you know, she does her job, but she does really, really well. But, you know, the other side is the goats side. So, but what you're saying is you don't have to niche, but you totally can. Yep. It, you certainly can. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm just saying is that if you, have interest in don't limit yourself like if you have interest in not that you should just write on everything willy-nilly you can do that if you want um but <laughs> <laughs> i kind of do it <laughs> but um whatever i wrote a poetry book last night because i'm doing an experiment but anyways um and i've never written a poetry book before i just sat down and wrote it but um, you can but you, you, can, have the platform. you can but you can be certainly you can be niche and be focused in your area and there's nothing wrong with that i'm just just saying that we all have a lot of interests you know, Yale's is the perfect example, and uh, Angela is a perfect example. They give a list of things that they that they do, and we have interest in all of those different areas. So, uh, just go, you know, go for it. So. so, so we're talking about. So the next question up is, and if you're watching and you want to chime in on how you showcase your expertise, I mentioned before I have I have a book, I have a Twitter chat, I have a Facebook live show, I've got two communities, one for people reading your goal guide and one for write on online, which is goal setting and community and webinars and talking. And you were talking before about, about now you have, there are no barriers. Right. And sure. I basically jumped in the pool of leading webinars because I've been talking about it for years. And when you can't meet people in real life, you just <laughs> jump in the pool of webinars. So you, you, share your particular expertise through books, but what are other ways in which you enjoy sharing what you know? Um, I, video, well, I certainly have a very large and active web presence. So, um, you know, I have several, I have a number of blogs more than I care, but I have one, two main ones. And um, I have Facebook groups. I have, um, often I will make a series of books around a topic and then make a Facebook group or, or a quick blog about that group, um, social media. Um, what else do I do? But I also, that's just, you know, the book side of me. I have, you know, I love making products of all kinds. And I've, um, I designed, I can show you the cards right here. It's easier. And um, so I drew in 1990, I drew, there it is. I drew all the states, counties, countries, continents, regions of the world and turned it into a, map product that's editable, um, which means you can change the colors. So people doing business presentations um, <clears throat> of any kind, whether you're a business, nonprofit, schools, homeschooling, everything, 
Um, you can make map sheets, you can use them in PowerPoint, you can do all kinds of things with them. And that led me down a path of, because it's easy to repurpose these digital files into lots of things that might, you know, probably my big interest, is I, I'm fascinated by how people make money. I just think it's so interesting, these sort of very weird and varied ways that people do this. Um, but also that interest translates me into exploring lots of different ways of making money. So I will take the artwork um, from those maps and make, um, you know, make products, make PDF sheets, make hats, mugs, t-shirts, you know, we can, if you want to be in the apparel line, you could be in an apparel line by the end of this call. <clears throat> you know, you can have a line of t-shirts. Um, you know, if you want to be a fashion designer, you can just go and do it. So, so many of these things are available that I find it just so fascinating that if I want to sell flashlights by the, you know, by the end of this call with my maps on them, we could go and do that. Water bottles. It just it doesn't, it's easy. Um, so I'm just fascinated by all that ability to access this stuff and also fascinated by, which is what I realized right away. And when I went on, I went online in 1995 is when I first accessed into the web. I was, Al Gore was just, you know, sitting next to me. And um, <laughs> um, I realized that we had this ability to, to, to reach an entire global community. Um, you know, we're so usually focused on our neighborhood, but we can reach the whole world this way. And now with the Facebook and, and tool, you know, all those tools, now we literally reach, you know, 2 billion to 3 billion people. Um, so that's sort of, you know, I just like to spread out into all the different ways that I can do that. So um, whether it's using social media, using blogs, using video, using, you know, product things, and then what can I feed into that system to do that kind of stuff? So it, that's and, I, and it's, it's really kind of fascinating, the fact that you, know, you and I have been online for a while, you more so, but last year, anybody who was resistant to being online also kind of got kicked into the pool because right. this is where where your people are and you get to and we met because of this we met right. because right. i'm in an international networking group with keith who made me an honorary bostonian i'm in la about <laughs> your for your boston internet marketing group so it's really the sky's the limit because right. and you could do more of that because you don't travel, you don't drive, you don't have to park. It's really just easy to put yourself in a position to meet new people and make new connections. Right, right. And so I want to jump, now we're going to jump forward. <laughs> because, and you alluded to this before, and you were talking about what you're teaching this week and what advice do you have for sharing one's expertise? And if you are watching live or the replay, please share your two, three, four cents as well. But you have a really cool system for just getting the ideas with your expertise out of your head and onto the page. But I, we're, get, we're doing rapid fire. I want to know how quickly you can you can just lay it all out there for people. Okay, Are so here ready? we go. Yep, I'm ready. All right, so this is method. I'm now calling. Finally, I have a name for it called the Easy Book Creation. I've struggled with the name of it, but this is this is the process. And and and, and Deb, I want you to do this while we're doing this. Okay. Is take a piece of paper or your phone. I, I always care. have paper. I always have paper, and I want you to write down. Everybody out there, write down the number one question you get asked. So this is, I don't want you to think too long about it. Just, we all get asked a certain question all the time. I want you to just write that question down. It could be a, a, a question. It might be a tip you're always giving out. It might be your first person. It's a piece of advice you're giving out. Just whatever that number one thing is that you, um, that you are always being asked that like, how do I do what? What is that thing? So write that thing down and tell me when you've written that down. And just one sentence. Don't do any more than one sentence. Now, so tell me you have that, right? Oh, do, do you want me to answer it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know what yeah. stops people from achieving your goals. Okay, so write that Their down. Goals. You write it down. Because the important part is you but have to I, write it down. But I wrote the book. Oh, <laughs> I know. It's all right. So now give me the number two. We're, only gonna, we're not going to go through all 10. Give me number two. What's the number two question that people, people do? 
that you might ask you or tip or something that you do. So that's everybody out there. Just write down that number. That's that, that second thing that people ask you. And you know what it is. You don't have to think. Deb, tell me what yours is. I'm putting you on the spot here. You totally are. Well, okay. So what stops people from achieving your goals? What can people do to achieve their goal? Okay. So we have number one and we have number two. One and two. So when you get a moment, you're going to do three through ten. All right. But that's that's you can go do that off on your own. So now <laughs> what you're going to do is so now you're going to have 10 sentences, 10, 12 sentences. And these are the main questions that people ask you. When you have a moment, I want you to write down one paragraph for that one sentence, not two paragraphs, but just one paragraph for the first one, for the second point, the third point, the fourth point, the fifth point. Do all 10 of them. And when you finish that, come back and write three to five uh, paragraphs on that thing. And we're going to do this in this sort of one through 10 order, because what happens is that we're thinking horizontally. Most people write vertically. You know, I was born here and I did this here and I went that way. And they go this way with their ideas. And what I want is to go this way with the ideas, because idea number nine will go, oh, you know, that actually, wait a minute, number three should be written like this. Oh, and number five, oh, that's number, you'll fix them, but you haven't gone too far. So you write one sentence, you write one paragraph, you write three to five paragraphs. When that's done, and three to five, somewhere around there, um, you stop, right? That's it. That's the book. Now, what you do is on the front end, you add an intro. On the back end, you add your bio, your services, your products, anything you want to sell. Because this is not a manifesto. This is a business help book type thing to get you going. Um, it's a book about this big. And this is a good example. This is a friend of mine. Um, his name is John, John Gorham, because I'm on the spot and I forgot his name. Went blank. Um, I had him do this as a legacy book. John was a single parent. His wife died right after their child. Their daughter was born. He raised his daughter. And this is a letter to his daughter about his life. Aww. And he, we sat and had a con this exact same conversation. And I said, okay, what I want you to do is put pivotal moments of your life. Like what's a transition moment or an important, not that you were born here. She knows when you were born. What did you do here? What's the transition? That kind of thing. And he put down 10 of them and then filled them in. So you can do it as a legacy also. So you put all those pieces together, that's your book. It's done, right? That's it. That's your book. Your, your book title is the number one question. That's your book title. So that becomes the title. Each of those other questions, those single sentences, those are the table of contents because they're descriptive, they're to the point, and they solve a problem, right? You're answering a problem. Boom, 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 boom. Um, you'll get that edited. You'll have a cover made. Put it together, maybe add some illustrations, flush it out a little bit, and um, print it ebook, print it regular, and you have a book. And you end up with something, you know, about this size, right? These are giveaway books that you give to your, you can even call it 10 tips to change your change your world. Um, 21 ways, right? So these are books that you're going to use. This is for lead generation. This is a book you're going to give out. You'll make a PDF. You'll send it out. It's the thank you book. It's the introduction book. This is your, your, your brochure, your business card. That's what this is. And you don't even have to go and print it on Amazon. You can print it at your local copier like this. This is what we did in Word. He just had it stapled like that. It's called Saddle Stitch. Um, and there you go. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the process. That's how fast you can do this. You can do this dictating it. You can do it dictating it on your phone, on Google Docs. All the modern uh, word processing programs have an audio version. You can do it into your phone and record it and send it up to rev.com or Timmy and have it transcribed. And you can do this in a weekend. At the end of a weekend, you'd have a book. That's how fast you can do this process. Um, if you don't have ideas, you've gotten up to seven and you run out of ideas, um, you can go on to Google and look at the, the people ask questions section of Google. You can go onto Amazon and go um, into table of contents of competing books and see what they've written about and go, oh, I forgot to write about that. Good. I'll rephrase it to be this. So is, uh, you know, and I, when I teach this, I talk about some of the ways you can do it, but you can go find the stuff. You don't, if you're like, I'm stuck. I don't know where else to write about it. Seven. The other thing I tell people to do is take a little notebook. I carry this in my pocket all the time. I have one of these little moleskin books. It can be a piece of paper. It can be your phone. And um, just 
over the course of a month or two, write down all the questions you get asked at work. If this is going to be like a work or professional book, just oh, that's a question somebody asked me. You know, they asked, where's the men's room? Write that. I, just write it down. You're not worrying about it being the right. Don't edit. The thing is, don't self edit. That's a huge thing in all of this. Um, because when you're done with that month or two and you go, oh, my book's all filled up. I guess I have enough. You take it, cut them up in little pieces, put them in little piles and go, okay, well, I guess that's how they see me. Because remember, this isn't about how you see yourself. This is about how the world sees you. You know, you're the ex expert in something. You may not know what that is. And you can use this process to, to figure out what is the question people ask me? I can't even think about it. At the end of a month, you'll know because they're going to ask you over and over the same question. And you'll go, well, I guess that's what I am. <laughs> okay. And then you can and embrace it. So. Th this is it. And I'm going to, I'm not going to edit you, but I'm going to edit you because <laughs> I love, first of all, I love the process because it works and you can use it for this freebie that you want on your website. You can use it to create an audio versions of whatever you could actually use this for a traditional book. If you're having trouble <laughs> figuring out if you have a story to tell things to share, you can use this process for anything. And I said before, I'm this huge fan of journaling and brainstorming and throwing everything out there and, and then looking it over, analyzing it, see what works for you. This is a great process. It's an excellent way to figure out what your next thing is. Right. And it could be something, and I always talk about this creative project that constantly gets ignored that I totally have to use this for <laughs> because it's this stuff and the way you talk about it is it's fun. And that's the way you need to look at this. This is a tool you can use for uh, a book for Amazon, a book for your website, something that you wanna get published traditionally, or you can use it just for content. Just do it, yeah, yeah. And what I'll say is, say you're not, you don't know quite what is resonating to the world, you've done this process. If you put this onto a blog in these nice, tight, compact, sort of focused questions, you put them up on a blog as individual posts, which I recommend, your blog is either has its own stats or you have Google Analytics on that, on those stats. And what you will see after that month is one of those things is where everybody went to. One of those questions is the key question. And you just have to look at your stats and go, huh, look at that. That's the one everybody wants. I guess that's where I'm, that's the <laughs> one I need to answer, that one. You know, if you can't quite figure out which one I want to do, just let, let the power of Google and people just floating around, you know, put that, put that out there. So um, it's it's a very easy way to sort of bring, as you just said, bring some analysis to this from the world's biggest, you know, an analyst. An a, analyst. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a lot. Of, but anyway, from the people who give, who are masters in analyzing data, let them tell you what's, what's the order you should put these things in. Maybe they need to be flipped around. You think, you know, that doesn't have the, the order doesn't isn't necessarily important until you sort of figure out which one they you know where's the flow going through it. So, um, so yeah, use that use the tools that are there, and there's amazing tools. And Google sends people almost immediately. You will know pretty quick. <laughs> you will know very. You'll go, huh? Wow, look at that! I didn't realize that. Um, very quickly, you'll realize what's what's going on. So. Wow, I feel like, well, normally I give a bonus goal, but you kind of just did. So we're get, the bonus goal, and I'll, I'll put this in the recap, which you can go to the devmethod.com slash blog. The recap will be up tomorrow. But the bonus goal is to just do this, to write. You don't have to do the whole thing, but write like the 10 question outline. Right, right. Just That works? Right. That works. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to put it in the chat. So everybody who's watching and then because once you have the 10 question outline you could do whatever with it right right you can make videos their podcasts you just just talk about it but do it in the slow method don't try that the key is don't take it all the way like do them kind of you know in smaller chunks because you're going to be in things are going to influence each other um you know so that's you can kind of do that. So that's 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 the key is that we tend to take what happens is you burn out. You go too far and it's too polished. And I go, oh, I can't undo that because I think that's such a great well that idea may not relate to the other one. So you need to kind of you kind of ease it up. Um, 
as it's going. So, and, and the other thing that you mentioned a while ago, which bears repeating, so I will repeat it, is stop self-editing. Just right. get all that out of your head because that's why so many people have one chapter of a book written. <laughs> that's right. It's amazing what happens when it's when it's on a piece of paper. Years ago, I went to a conference in San Diego. It was at the Hard Rock Hotel. And my plane was later in the day. And I had this book idea in my hand that I wanted to work on. And so I went down to the cafe and um, the cafeteria, you know, the cafe, the coffee shop that was at the, the hotel. And I said, can I just have a table and sit here for about six hours? I'm just going to write. And you can bring me coffee and then food. I made sure I, you know, I gave a great tip and I just ate a number of meals there. But I said, I just need one place I can sit. And you just, I don't, you know, you just bring me stuff. And I sat there and just, I had my research material, I had everything I did, and I just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. Um, you know, I didn't edit. I, I didn't do the self-editing. The self-editing really hammers your creativity. Like one tip that I know people that's a very common one is write today, edit tomorrow. Like do not edit. Some say don't don't change the spelling, don't change anything. There's the there's the whole um the timer. Have you ever heard of the, the kitchen timer method? I talk about it all the time. Right. Set the, set the time for 10 minutes and write. And if you can't figure it, if nothing's coming, just start writing blah, 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 and let the brain catch up. And you'll go, oh, oh, now I know where we're going. And just do that. So. Oh, I, I have a version of it. I say not to write blah, 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 but you can write your grocery list. You can write your to-do list. But when you have, and I usually say 15 minutes, but when you have these 15-minute self-imposed appointments, I mean, you can write the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog mm -hmm. and see what the lazy dog did next and start your your creativity. The other, and, and this brings to mind something else that I think is really helpful is what, to have two projects going at once. Because if you're stuck on one, you can write the other and if you get the, and then you can jump back and forth. So that way you're always moving forward on something. Well, you know about what, Lynn Manuela, how do you pronounce his name? Who wrote Hamilton? Um, Lynn Lynn Manuel went, and you know the guy I mean. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> great. Now we're both. Yeah, but, like, but he had two projects. He wrote Hamilton, and he wrote um, Mul is it Mulan. He wrote one of the Disney films at the same time, and he would just Lynn Lin Mal Lynn oh. Manuel Miranda. I love him. Yeah. yeah. Miranda. So he wrote, he had, nobody knew it. Everybody thought, oh, this guy's a genius. He wrote this unbelievably play, um, you know, Hamilton, which is incredibly complicated and with unbelievable lyrics and dialogue and stuff. Well, he was writing another one at the exact same time. He just, okay, I'm done with that for the moment. I'm going to switch over here, put my brain over here, and I'm going to bring my brain over here. So I always have five or six. 20. Huh? You have 20. I have probably 20. Yeah. <laughs> probably 20. Okay. Somewhere I between have, two and five, I think is good. Is a, is a good number yeah. of balls in the air at once. Yeah. And even if it's, it's something else you can do, you can have the two and then just a list of the things you're going to do next. And if you're stuck on your one and your two, you could just brainstorm your ideas for your next thing. Right. There, I mean, do, one of the things I do, I have ideas all the time. And what I'll do is, is something is something idea worthy. So I will come. I used to walk to my work when I used to work. So I used to, um, some say I've never retired. Um, I will walk to work. And that was my time for my brain to go, oh, this is thinking time about things. I didn't talk on the phone. I didn't listen to music. I just did my walk every day to work. And I come up with ideas. And what I did was I often would go into the office and register a URL around that idea. If I was still a year later working on that idea, that meant it had some stick to it and I wanted to work on that. That was something that excited me. A lot of ideas just faded away and I just let them go because they just didn't have the energy for me to continue on with them. So I, I let the process of ideas come and let them fail and fall away and not worry about how I didn't get to that thing. It was never meant to be. You know, I just I just put my energy on the ones and let I let sort of the, the day and the world and what I feel about it push these things forward. And um, it's pushed forward a lot of stuff. But there's, you know, there's probably, you know, <laughs> 10 times this, this has just fallen to the wayside. And, and I just don't care. 
it's it's gone. So that's okay. So. In, in so the other thing, the other link that I put in there is because I did a mini start 2021 now interview with you because that was one URL I was stuck on, which was start 2021 now.com. And some people are still starting 2021 now, but your, your motto that you gave was make stuff, sell stuff. Right. And that's really, if we were to, to, yeah, if we were really to like, gather everything you said today and put it in a nice little box it's going to be you want to showcase your expertise make yep. stuff sell stuff boom right. that done yep that's it make stuff sell stuff if there's so many tools so many ways that you're just sitting at our feet and it's just gotten so much easier and just try it just see what happens and you will be surprised you're just you will have no you have no clue that's something that you know this thing that you just thought as a as a whim is the one that took off because we just you just don't know so you got to put it out there see what and there and the validation of it is that somebody puts money on it that they'll buy it that's that's when you know that there's some it may not be you may not want to go further with it but you'll know there's some validation because somebody else also thinks there's something valuable in that in that product so so wow mm -hmm. so my brain is like exploding which is great i love that no it's just there's so many things that you can take from this conversation and to not overwhelm yourself if you're watching live or the replay pick like do the bonus goal right and then just pick one or two of these things and even a little bit of a at a time incorporate it into your life into your schedule devote the time to create something new to showcase your expertise and then run with it, roll with it, see what happens. Right, right. So, yeah, give well, a little chunk. You know, even if you look at what Google does, I can't remember whether it's 10% or 20%, but Google gives their employees a percentage of their day to do whatever they feel like doing. And a lot of the products that Google that we use, like uh, Gmail, and um, I think Google Analytics, some of the other couple of them, I know Gmail is one of them and there's other ones. Those are things that just somebody in their office just went, oh, I have an idea, I'm gonna try this. And because they gave them the freedom, so you can do that in your own life. You know, just pick an hour on Friday morning, your 15 minute goals, pick, just come in 10 minutes earlier on something. It's amazing what you can accomplish with just some sort of, just focus on and just try it and do it every day or do it every now and then and you'll be amazed. It will build up and, and uh, uh, you'll get, you'll go, wow, I didn't realize I could do that. So. Okay. So now we have a second bonus goal, which <laughs> is give yourself the freedom to explore your new ideas. And and I, I have to, we're going to do one more shout out to Angela. I'm going to say a few things and we're going to wrap up, but she entered a competition using a book she wrote 11 years ago. You don't know when the timing is right for your thought right. or for whatever. So just right. go with it be at one with what you love and share it with the world right okay so bonus goal number two give yourself the freedom to explore new ideas first bonus goal is where did it go it's here somewhere first <laughs> bonus goal app is write the 10, 10 question, question outline yeah. and maybe yeah. from there you'll have one of the things for bonus goal number two bruce this has <laughs> been so much fun <laughs> oh my goodness! Did you have as much fun as I did? Probably not. Yes. Oh, I love doing this stuff. This is great. It's just like, like it's a brain dump. You just go, and just you know, it's it's fun. It's a lot. Of okay. Fun. So to help people one more time, where they can connect with you, I will wrap us up and then we'll give a final thought. But so, where can people find you? So the um, the two good the two two great places. One is BruceJonesDesign.com. You can see right there where it is. Um, that's the address on the screen. And so all things about me are there and uh, my new projects and all my books and things are listed there. And then right here, the Facebook group, how to publish your book. Um, I usually say this is the place to come meet me. Just search on how to publish your book. Um, Facebook will feed it up to you. Come on over, join the group. And uh, it's artists, uh, artists and writers and self-publishers and everybody sort of doing things around publishing. Um, it's it's a great place to answer, ask questions and you know we're engaged we're always engaged we're in there all the time you can ask Angela she's she's a, a great member of that group and um, she puts stuff out there all the time so it's it's 
it's that's it. Those are the two best places. So wonderful. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna real quickly also put up the link to uh, Write On Online Facebook group. Well, it's in here somewhere. It was here a second ago. And then I got distracted by the great conversation. And so join Bruce's group. Oh, there if, you're not, if you're not already a member, please join Write On Online. If you're reading your goal guide, there's also facebook.com slash group slash your goal guide. And if you want to learn more about me and my book, go to thedebmethod.com, it's all about me. And if you're interested in learning more about your goal guide, your goalguidebook.com will take you to the Amazon page or you could just find it at your favorite bookstore. Bruce, this has been <laughs> so much fun. Um, thank you so much for joining. Thank you everybody for watching live. Again, I'm Deborah Eckerling. I am author of Your Goal Guide and founder of The Dev Method, my system for helping you define, plan, and achieve your goals. And please connect with me. I'm at The Dev Method everywhere. And you can find me every Sunday night on Twitter at 7 p.m. for Goal Chat. And I will be back next Monday and every Monday at 4 p.m. on the Mango Facebook page for another amazing guest and a wonderful Goal Chat Live. So so, Bruce, thank you. Thank you. Listeners, thank you. thank you. Remember, whatever your expertise, whatever your goals, you can do it. We're rooting for you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.